Hello everyone. Well, you ever noticed how astrophotographers always seem to have more than one scope? Well, there is a reason for this and it has to do with the size of object that's being imaged. You want to have the right scope for the right job. And in this video, I'm going to go through the field of view using astronomy tools with my current telescope and my newly purchased but yet to have received a telescope. I'm Kurt Zapatello and you're watching AstroQuest One. Lately everyone seems to be getting raptors, red cats, and rasas. So naturally, I'm going to go in the other direction and get something with a longer focal length and smaller field of view in order to go after smaller galaxies and such. Okay, I'll be doing comparison models using astronomy tools. Astronomy tools is a collection of free field of view calculators, star charts, and other astronomical goodies. I highly recommend it for astronomers and astrophotographers. It's very powerful. I will start by using my current scope, my current telescope and camera. I have the AT115 refractor and my ASI 1600 and I'll change the scope to my new scope uh, for comparisons and you'll see why I, I would want my new scope. And but I'm going to leave the camera alone. Now, the reason I'm going to leave the camera alone is because the, the sensor size, the pixel size, the pixel scale uh, can have a profound effect on imaging. And I'll discuss those issues in a subsequent video. If you followed me or, or have been following me, you know I don't like to do super long videos. I don't like to go over 20 minutes typically. And so that's why I'm going to do that, talk about those other things in another video because they can get very complex. So let's go jump in and we'll I'll go do my thing with astronomy tools. Okay, well, I've opened up astronomy tools. It's, it's at astronomy.tools. It's a free program and this is what the, what the, what it looks like. And the first thing I'm going to do is just go to the field of view calculator. And I'm going to go on imaging mode. It's on visual mode, it starts off with. All right. And let's have it have it do an object. I'm first going to start off with the Pleiades, M45. I'm going to put my scope in here. It's the Astrotech 115 refractor. I'm going to put my camera in here. It's the ZWO 1600. And I typically use a focal reducer, a 0.8 focal reducer. All right, and it already has everything in here. When I put the telescope in there, it already had the focal length. I didn't have to add that, it had the aperture. I put the camera in there, it already had the pixel array in here and it had my pixel size. So all this is already in here. So I'm gonna press add to view and this red line is the outline of the picture. This is a field of view. Now this is a pretty good field of view for this object, it's perfect. But what happens if I wanna go after a different object? Let's say I wanna go after something smaller like M104, which is a sombrero galaxy. Change it and I'm gonna put add to field of view. Oh, it's already in here. Now look how small M104 is compared to the Pleiades. So all this, would be wasted space. And I, it's a, such a small dinky object, it really wouldn't do it justice. Now, you might think, well, why don't you just crop it? And that's what I would do, but you can only crop it so far. And not only that, let's take a look at my pixel array again. This is a 4,500 by 3,500. That comes out to be about 16 million million pixels is actually 16,389,120 pixels. So if I crop it, I'm no longer getting those 16 million pixels. I'd probably be getting like one quarter of that. So the resolution would go down. So what can you do? Well, if I went to a different scope, 
And here's the drum roll, please, for my new scope that I ordered. I've ordered a Celestron Edge 8. Here it is right here. I'll put that thing in there. And I'm going to, I would take a picture using the 0.7 focal reducer. And I'm going to add that to the field of view. Now look at it, much, much less. And I'm still using the same camera. So now this is how I would like to crop it if I was using the uh, AstroTech 115, but my resolution will go down because I, I don't have as many pixels. Right here, I still have the same 16 million pixels in this smaller field of view. Okay, I can take this away, the AstroTech, and there we go. And you can see how much better of a picture I would I would um, have by using this this new setup. Okay, now let's go in the opposite direction. Let's say I, I'm going to shoot something that has a much larger field of view, like M42, the Orion Nebula. So here it is. Here's the Orion Nebula with that Celestron 8-inch edge, and it's <laughs> it only covers a small portion of it. So maybe I'd be better off using my other telescope, and I would. So let's go get it. Add the field of view, and it is better. It's much better than the Celestron Edge to to get to uh, getting the entire thing. But still, it's still not covering the entire picture. Now. With that edge that I ordered, I can also get a special attachment to the edge. Uh, it's called a hyperstar, and some of you guys are, might be familiar with it. Now, what a hyperstar system does is it takes the secondary mirror out and replaces it with a focal reducer. And what that does, it makes the field of view, the field of view of the edge eight, and not the field of view, the focal length of the edge is 2,000 millimeters. The focal length of the, my AstroTech was 805 millimeters. And the focal length of the edge with the Hyperstar is 400. So it'll give it a much larger field of view. If I can only find it, here it is with Hyperstar. And we'll add that to the field of view. I'll take the reducer out. And there it is. Now I've got the complete Orion Nebula in there with this, uh, with the Hyperstar in there. Now, the one thing I hadn't mentioned is the, uh, the AstroTech 115, that has a native F ratio of seven, which is, you know, relatively mid range. The edge eight with no focal reducer on it has an F ratio of F10, and that's considered pretty slow. What that means is I've got to take longer exposures in order to get light, in order for it to brighten up the objects. Um, so you get more magnification, but it suffers in the um, amount of light that it, that, that or the exposures that you need to take. You just got to make them much longer. Now, with that 0.7 focal reducer that I was talking about, I'd get a, it would lower it to, to an F ratio of 7, which is what my, the native refractor is. Now, I, now since I put the 0.8 refractor on, uh, 0.8 focal reducer on my 115 refractor, that makes it so it's an F 5.6. So that's, that's pretty good. Now, the Hyperstar system, that lowers this F ratio, which was a 10, it lowers it to two, or actually 1.9. So that is incredibly fast. So there, there is uh, some advantages to using the, that system on here. Of course, if I was taking a picture of something small, I'd still be better off without the uh, Hyperstar on here. Okay, so that was my little introduction into the field of view and why I'd want, I, why I chose to get another scope and why 
most other astrophotographers have many scopes. You want to get the right scope for the right job. As I said, the camera and the sky conditions have profound effects on what scope you should use as well. And I'll get into that and the, those, those constraints in a subsequent video. Anyways, we'll see you later. Mm -hmm.